to your first bonus video all about setting SMART goals. This one is helpful to start you off early because honestly, the better you get at this, the better marketer you will be. And while we're focused on goals for now, it's useful to apply this SMART framework to strategies, tactics, and really anything that you're going to spend time or money on in the future. So, quick refresher on what SMART stands for. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. In this video, we're going to bring the SMART framework to life with an example. Ready? Let's do it. Okay, let's say your tasting room, winery, cider house, or brewery grand opening is January 15th, 2020. And to start, you'll only be able to sell product from there. No distribution in the beginning. So, you have some business goals around driving a certain level of revenue from your tasting room in that first quarter after you open. Realistically, you've been so focused on getting the product ready and the venue open and looking great that you haven't done a ton of marketing just yet. So, you feel like you probably need to build some awareness before you can ever expect anyone to visit or buy, especially if you want to achieve that somewhat ambitious Q1 goal. Friends, family, and their word of mouth will only get you so far. So, let's take a stab at writing a smart marketing goal related to the more general layman's goal of build awareness. To be clear, there are quite a few different goals I can think of here, but we're going to just pick this one and run it through the pipes. Then we can do the same for the other marketing goals we have in mind that might help us achieve this business revenue goal. When you run into that conundrum of having kind of multiple marketing goals and ideas in mind, I suggest you do the same. Just pick one and run it through SMART to get clear, and then you can come back and do the same with others. Specific. Okay, so here I want you to ask yourself, what do I need to do and why do I need to do it as it relates to the business goal? Now again, lots of ways marketing can help drive a building awareness kind of goal, but we're just picking one for illustration. So let's say what you want to do is increase local consumer interest. Why? So you have an audience who's anticipating your brand opening when it's time to start promoting it. Measurable. How will you know if you succeeded or failed at this? How will you know you have increased local consumer interest? Well, one metric could be how many local Facebook followers you have. Another could be local mailing list subscribers. Why did I pick those? Again, there are many ways to slice this, but if I think ahead to how I'm going to promote and sell tickets to our grand opening, I know that I'll likely use social media and my mailing list. So the bigger those audiences are when I'm ready to promote and invite people, the better. Achievable. It's good to be aspirational, but especially when you're first starting out with marketing, it's more important to be realistic. How do you know what's achievable? Well, you'll learn some of that in this bootcamp. And if you're a full bootcamp member, you can always ask our private Facebook community to get others' opinions and experiences for context. Remember, we're not talking about how we're going to actually grow these numbers just yet just that we want to get them to a certain point and we need to figure out what's realistic. So that number should be a number that's big enough to make a difference in achieving your overall goal, but not so big that you'll never be able to do it. So I'm just going to put some numbers in there for now, but you can always go back and revise and think about different numbers that make sense for your business later. One word of caution on results expectations here. Just like mom always said, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. You wouldn't just make one beer and expect to build a whole business around it. You'll make multiple styles of beers and different versions, some of which will be wildly successful, while others may bomb entirely. Spreading out the pressure of success is smart. This is particularly important when you're new to marketing and learning as you go. If your entire business goal is dependent on one marketing goal with no other additional marketing goals or other non-marketing business activities happening to help ensure you'll hit it, that's risky. So multiple marketing goals, sales goals, product goals, and other efforts all working in tandem are always needed to increase the likelihood of achieving our overarching business goals. 
Remember, marketing is only one piece of the puzzle. Relevant. I'm gonna skip over this one for a second. I think it's best to use it as a last check. So we're gonna move on to time bound. This one is super critical. This and the metric you're using to measure success are honestly the two most important pieces in my opinion. Without them, you can waste a lot of time, money, and energy, especially because I know how busy you all are. So it's really easy to just do things and then never go back and figure out if they worked or not. If you set up a deadline and a key metric before you start, you'll be more likely to really learn from every marketing activity, waste as little as possible, and get better over time. So pick a realistic date of when you need to hit the spot. For example, I'm gonna say November, since I'll still want two months to promote our grand opening to this now larger local audience. And yes, that would be a whole separate marketing goal related to revenue, this revenue business goal. Something around driving grand opening bookings, reservations, or ticket sales. And that separate goal would be written in a smart way, of course. Okay, back to relevant. So. Here is where you need to pause and just make sure it all hangs together. If we hadn't specified local consumer growth, for example, that wouldn't be relevant to driving this particular business goal. Why? Because if we're trying to get people to come to our grand opening, they need to be in the area, don't they? So local is important. So we should focus our energy there. Of course, there could be another marketing goal related to getting visiting tourists to the grand opening, but that's not the goal we're working on here. Part of the relevancy check is ensuring that we're staying focused. Two other good ways to ask yourself if this goal is relevant is, number one, going back to our marketing definition and that specific piece that's all about the right message for the right consumer at the right time in the right place. The other way to check this is the simple kind of who, what, when, where, why, and how questions. These are all about gut checking to see if what you're planning to do is actually relevant to moving the needle on a metric that will have a meaningful impact on the goal you're trying to achieve. One more side note here. Remember that myth we talked about related to measurement in course one, pillar one, how so many people think that you can't measure marketing. This helps bring that myth to life a bit. Notice how our marketing success metric is not revenue related. Those revenue metrics are the business metrics of success for our business goal. That's why it's so important at the top of our mug sheet to think about the business goal and marketing goal together to ensure you're keeping them distinct but related. Because if you were expecting a business result from the marketing work, you may be setting yourself up to fail or to not be able to truly measure it. But can you see how achieving this marketing goal and meeting your marketing and measurement success metric will ultimately help you achieve that revenue business goal? I hope you do. This is an important distinction around expectations and results as they relate to marketing. There are, of course, marketing activities that do have clear revenue metrics that you can tangibly measure and tie that to the exact marketing activity. But it tends to be the exception versus the rule. So take the time to match the business goal to a marketing goal and then define the marketing metric as part of your SMART process. Okay, so let's summarize what we learned by bringing this example to life on our mug sheet. We have our business goal of driving a certain level of revenue from your tasting room in the first quarter from the January 2020 grand opening. Then we originally had our not very smart marketing goal of build awareness, which as you can see is kind of hard to put into action or measure as it's written, which makes it feel overwhelming. And when things are overwhelming, they're more likely to be cast aside in favor of more concrete tasks that we actually feel like we can achieve. But we're not going to do that because we're on our way to becoming rockstar marketers. Instead, we're going to take this vague marketing goal that was the first thing that popped in our mind and use SMART to give it some structure. And when we did that, we get increase local consumer interest by growing local Facebook followers to 400 and local mailing list subscribers to 200 by November 2019. So we then have an audience to promote our grand opening to in order to then drive visits and sales. 
that last part to then drive visits and sales? You guessed it. That would be a new kind of vague marketing goal to eventually run through SMART in order to make it actionable and measurable when you're ready to tackle it. So you can see how that one business goal will spawn multiple marketing goals, some like these two that will be kind of contingent on each other and others that will be unique and can run in parallel. All right, go forth and be smart in everything you do. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. It takes a little extra time at first, but once you get into practice, it really saves you time, money, and energy to do this up front. And it helps marketing feel more doable. Like you might actually be able to come up with some marketing tactics to achieve it. Imagine that. We'll be doing lots of learning about marketing tactics throughout bootcamp and applying this smart framework along the way will be hugely beneficial. Okay. Head on back to where you left off in the main content and I'll see you there.